Greek battle. Euripides versus Aeschylus. Are you ready to rumble? Who do you think will win? Hello, my name is Jacqueline Elisabeth, and I'll be playing the god, Dionysus. Hello, my name is Trisha Weiler Pizarra, and I'll be playing the slave Xanthius. Hello, my name is Ayan, and I'll be playing the Greek playwright Aeschylus. My name is Stuart Fisher, and I'll be playing the better Greek playwright Eur Euripides. My name is Marge McGugan, and I'm going to be playing the king Heracles, a maid and a hostess. I'm Paul Brewster. I'm going to be playing a corpse, Pluto, the god of the underworld, and member of the chorus. My name is Andrew Hefty. I'll be playing Charon the Ferryman, Aeacus, and Pleiathene. Hi, I'm Jeff Basker, and I'm one of the frogs. My name is Narain Chaudhary, and I'm the other frog. Hi, Melvin Smith. And I will be a member of the chorus of initiated persons.
Shall I crack any of these old jokes, Master? At which the audience never fails to laugh? <laughs> I, what do you will? Except I'm getting crushed. Fight shy of that. I'm sick of that already. Nothing else smart? I saved my shoulders aching. Come on now, that comical joke. All oh, my heart. Only be careful not to shift your pole and... What? And vow that you've a bellyache. May I not say I'm so overburdened so that none ease me? I must ease myself? For mercy's sake, not till I'm going to vomit. What? I must bear these burdens and not make one of the jokes. Emphasis and Lysis and Freonices. In every play they write, put the mouths of all their burden bears. Don't make them, no. I tell you, when I see their plays and hear those jokes, I come away more than a 12 month older than I went. Oh. No, thrice unlucky neck of mine, which is now getting crushed. Yeah, it must not crack a joke. Now is not this fine pampered insolence when I myself, Dionysus, son of Pipkin, toil on afoot and let this fellow ride taking no trouble and no burden bearing? What don't I bear? How can you when you're riding? Why I bear these? How? Most unwillingly. Does not the donkey bear the load you're bearing? Not what I bear myself by Zeus, not he. How can you bear when you are born yourself? No, no, but anyhow my shoulder is aching. Hmm. Then since you say the donkey helps you not, you lift him up and carry him in turn. Ah, oh, hang it all. Why didn't I fight at sea? You should have smarted bitterly for this. Get down, you rascal. I've been trudging on till now. I've reached the portal where I'm going. First to turn in. Boy! Boy! I say there, boy! Who banged the door? How like a prancing senator he drove against it. Mercy me! What is this? Boy? Yes? Did you observe? What? How alarmed he is! I truly, lest you've lost your wits. <laughs> oh, boy, Demeter. I can't choose but to laugh. Biting my lip won't stop me. <laughs> uh, pray you, come hither. I have need of you. I know. I can't help laughing. I, I can't help it. A lion's hide upon a yellow silk, a club, and a bushkin. <laughs> What's that all about? Hey, where, where were you going? <clears throat> I was uh, serving lately aboard the uh, Cleosthenes. And fought? And sank more than a dozen of the enemy ships. You too? We too. <laughs> and then I awoke, and lo. <laughs> As on deck, I'm reading to myself the Andromeda. A sudden pang of longing shoots through my heart. You can't conceive how keenly. How big a pang? A small one. Molin's size? Caused by a woman? No. A boy? No, no! Oh. A man? Ah. Ah. Was it for Cleisthenes? Don't mock me, brother! On my life, I am in a bad way. Such fierce desire consumes me. Ah, oh, little brother. <laughs> How? I can't describe it. But yet, I'll tell you in a riddling way. Have you e'er felt a sudden lust for soup? Soup? Zeus of mercy, yes. 10,000 times. <laughs> Is the thing clear or must I speak again? Oh, not of the soup. I'm clear about the soup. Well, just that sort of pang 
devours my heart. For lost Euripides. A dead man too? And no one shall persuade me not to go after the man. Uh, do you mean blue to Hades? And lower still. If there's a lower still. <laughs> What on earth for? I want a genuine poet. For some are not, and those that are, are bad. Oh. What? Does not Iofan live? Well, he's the sole good thing remaining, if even he is good. For even of that, I am not exactly certain. If go you, there is Sophocles. He comes before Euripides. Why not take him? Not till I've tried if Iophone's coin rings true when he's alone apart from Sophocles. Besides, Euripides, the crafty rogue, will find a thousand shifts to get away. But he was easy here, is easy there. <laughs> But Agathon, where is he? He has gone and left us. A genial poet by his friends much missed. Gone where? To join the blessed in their banquets. And but what of Xenocles? No! He be hanged! For Athangelus? But never a word of me! Not though my shoulders chase so terribly! <laughs> but I have you not a shoal of little songsters, tragedians by the myriad who can chatter and furlong uh, faster than Euripides? Those be mere vintage leavings, jabberers, choirs of swallow broods, the graders of their art, who get one chorus and are seen no more, the muses' love once gained. But oh, my friend, search where you will. You'll never find a true, creative, genius uttering startling things. Creative? What do you mean? I mean a man who'll dare some novel venture, some conceit, air Zeus's chamber, or time's foot, or, or this. It was not my mind that swore. My tongue committed a little perjury on its own account. <laughs> you like that style. Like it? I dote upon it. I vow it's ribald nonsense, and you know it. Rule not my mind. You've got a house to mind. Really? And truly, though, tis paltry stuff. Teach me to dine. But never a word of me. Uh, but tell me. Truly, twas for this I came dressed up to mimic you. Mm -hmm. What friends received and entertained you when you went below to bring us uh, back Cerberus, in case I need them. And tell me too, the havens, fountain shops, roads, resting places, stews, refreshment rooms, towns, lodgings, and hostesses with whom were found the fewest bugs. <laughs> but never a word of me. You are really game to go. Oh, drop that, can't you? And tell me this. Of all the roads you know, which is the quickest way to get to Hades? I want one not too warm, nor yet too cold. Hmm. Which shall I tell you first? Which shall it be? Oh, there's one by rope and bench. You launch away and hang yourself. No, thank you. That's too stifling. Ooh. Hmm. Well, then there's a track, a short and beaten cut by pestle and mortar. <gasps> Hemlock, do you mean? And just so, yeah. No, oh, that's too deathly cold away. 
You've hardly started. Uh, your chin's get numbed. Well, would you like a steep and swift descent? Aye. That's the style. My walking powers are small, small. Go down to the ceramic use. And do what? Climb to the tower's pinnacle. And then? Observe the torch race started. And when all the multitude is shouting, let them go, let yourself go. Go with it. To the ground. Oh! That would break my brains to envelopes. I'll not try that. Oh, well, which will you try? The way you went yourself. Ooh. A parlous voyage that. For first you'll come to an enormous lake of fathomless depths. And how am I to cross? An ancient mariner will row you over in a wee boat so big to the fair's two obols. Why? The power two obols have the whole world through. How came they thither? Theasus took them down, and next you'll see great snakes and savage monsters in the tens of thousands. You needn't try to scare me. I'm going then, to go. And then weltering seas of filth and ever rippling dung and plunged therein. Whoso has wronged the stranger here on earth or robbed his boy love of the promised pay or swinged his mother, or profanely smitten his father's cheek, or sworn an oath forsworn, or, or, or copied out a speech of Morsimus. There too, but I, should he be plunged? Where has danced the sword dance of Sinisius? And next the breath of flutes will float around you. And glorious sunshine such as ours you'll see in myrtle groves and happy bands who clap their hands in triumph, men and women too. And uh, who are they? The happy mystic bands. And I'm the donkey in the mystery show, but I'm not standing on one instant longer. Who will tell you everything you want to know? That you'll find them dwelling close beside the road. You're going to travel just at Pluto's gate. Fare thee well, my brother. And to you, good cheer. Now, Sirrah, Xanthius, pick you up the traps. Before I put them down? And quickly, too! No, Frithing, no, but hire a body, one they're carrying out for the purpose of the trip. And if I can't find one? Then I'll take them. Good. And see, they are carrying out a body now. Hello! You there, you dead man. Are you willing to carry down our little traps to Haiti? Are they? These. <laughs> too much for the job. Nick, Nick, that's too much. Oh, out of the pathway, you. Bashruthi, stop! Maybe we'll strike a bargain. <laughs> Pay me two drachmas or it's no use talking. One and a half. Oh, I'd leave for live again. How absolute the knave is. He be hanged. I'll go myself. You're the right sort of my man. Now to the ferry. Yo, hop, uh, lay her to. Whatever is that? Why? That's the lake by Zeus, whereof he spake and yawns the ferry boat. Poseidon, yes, and that old fellow's Charon. Karen! Oh, welcome, Karen. Welcome, Karen. Who's for the rest from every pan and L? Who's for Lethe's plain? The donkey sharing? Who's for Cerebdia, Tanium, or the ravens? I. Oh, hurry in. But... Uh, are you going really in truth to the raven? Aye, for your behoof, step in. Now, Xanthius, lad. A slave! Uh
I take no slave, uh, unless he has fought for his body rights at sea. I couldn't go. I've got the eye disease. Then uh, fetch a circuit about the lake, where I... I... Must I wait? Uh, beside the withering stone, uh, hard by the rest. You understand? Too well. Oh, what ill omen crossed me as I started? Mm. Dionysus, sit to the oar. Who else for the boat? Be quick. Ah, what are you doing, Dionysus? Ah, uh, ah, uh, what am I doing? Sitting on to the oar, you told me to yourself. Now, sit you there, you little pup gut. <sighs> so? Now, stretch your arms out for legs before you. So? Come, don't keep fooling. Plant your feet. And now, pull with a will. What? H how am I to pull? I'm not an oarsman, seaman, salaminian. I you can't. Can, you can just dip your oar in once. You'll hear the loveliest timing songs. Hmm. What from? Frog swans. Then give the word. Heave ahoy! Heave ahoy! We, children of the fountain and the lake, let us wake! Our full choir shout as the flutes are ringing out, our symphony of clear voice song. The song we used to love in the marshland up above, in praise of Dionysus to produce a Messian Dionysus, son of Zeus! When the revel tipsy throng, all crapulous and gay, to a precinct reeled along the holy pitcher day. <sighs> oh dear, oh dear! I now declare I have got a bump upon my rump. <laughs> but you perchance don't care. Hang you and your coaxing too! There's nothing but coax with you! That is right, Mr. Busybody, right! Why the muses of the lyre love us well! And Hwangfoot Pan who plays on the pipe his jack and lays! And Apollo Harper Bright in our chorus takes delight! For the strong reed's sake which I grow within my lake, to be girdled in his lyre's deep shell! My hands are blistered very sore. My stern below is sweltering so. Twill soon I know up turn and roar. Break a kick axe, go axe, go axe. Oh, turn full race. Oh, break give oar. Oh, sing no more. Ah, no. Ah, no. Loud and louder our chant must flow. If ever ye sang of yore, when in sunny and glorious days. Through the rushes and the marsh flags springing, on we swept in the joy of singing, myriad divine round delays. Or when fleeing the storm we went down to the depths, and our choral song wildly raised to a loud and long bubble bursting in accompaniment. Go ax, go ax! This timing song I take from you! That's a dreadful thing to do. Much more dreadful if I roll, till I burst myself, I troll! Go ax, go ax, go ax! Go, go hang yourselves, for what care I? All the same, we'll shout and cry! Stretching all our throats with song! Shout and cry all day long! You'll never, never win! This you shall not beat us in! No, nor ye prevail o'er me! Never, never! I'll my song shout if need be all day long! Until I've learned to master your coax! Brekkekekex, coax, coax! I thought I'd put a stop to your coax! Stop! Easy! Take the oars and push them! For sure now, and pay your fare to go. Here is two ovals. Xanthius! Where's Xanthius? Is it Xanthius? There. Oi, oi. Come here there. Glad to meet you, master. What have you there? Nothing but filth and darkness. But tell me. 
Did you see the parasites and perjured folk he mentioned? Didn't you? Poseidon, yes! Why, look! I see them now out in the audience. What's the next step? We best be moving on. This is the spot where Heracles declared those savage monsters dwell. Oh, hang the fellow. That's all his bluff. He thought to scare me off. The jealous dog knowing my plucky ways. There's no such swaggerer lives as Heracles. Why, I'd like nothing better than to achieve some bold adventure. Oh, why they have our trip. I know you would. Oh, hello. I hear a voice. What? What? Behind us there. Get you behind! Get you... No, it's in front. I'll get you in front directly. And now I see a most ferocious monster. Oh, what's it like? <laughs> Everything by turns. It is now a bull. Now it's a mule. And now it's the loveliest girl. Oh, oh, oh where? Uh, I'll go and, and meet her. It ceased to be a girl. It's a dog now. It is Empusa! Well, its face is all ablaze with fire. Is it a copper leg? The copper leg, yes, one and one of cow dung. Oh, whither shall I flee? Oh, whither I? My priest, protect me, and we'll sup together. King Heracles, we're done for. Oh, poor bear, good fellow. Call me anything but that. Well then, Dionysus. Oh, that's worse. Again. I said you go thy way, oh master, here, come here. Oh, what's up now? Take courage, all serene. And like Hedulus, now we may say, out of the storm, here comes some new fine weather. And Poos is gone. Swear it. By Zeus she is. Swear it again. By Zeus. Again. By Zeus, oh dear, oh dear, how pale I grow to see her. But he from fright has yellowed me all over. Oh, me. Whence fall these evils on my head? Who is the god to blame for my destruction? Eh, Zeus's chamber was the foot of time. What's the matter? What's the matter? Didn't you hear it? What? The breath of flutes. I and a whiff of torches. Breathe over me too, a very mystic whiff. Then crouch we down and mark what's going on. Oh, Iacus. Oh, Iacus. Oh, Iacus. I have it, Master. Tis those blessed mystics, of whom he told us sporting hereabouts. They sing Iacus, which Diagoras made. I think so, too. We had better both keep quiet and so find out exactly what it is. O oh, Iacus, power excelling, here is stately temple dwelling. O oh, Iacus, O oh, Iacus, come to the tread this verdant level, come to dance in mystic level. Come watch round thy forehead hurdles, Many a wreath of fruitful myrtles. Come with wild and saucy paces, mingling in our joyous dance, pure and holy, which embraces all the charms of all the graces when the mystic choirs advance. Holy and sacred queen Demeter's daughter, though what a jolly whiff of pork breathes over me! Hist! And perchance you'll get some tripe yourself. Come, arise from sleep awaking. Come, the first torches shaking. Oh, Iacus, oh, Iacus, morning star that shinest nightly. Lo, the mead is brazing brightly. Age forget his years and sadness. Age needs curvet for gladness. Lift thy flashing torches o'er us. Marshal all thy blameless train. Lead, oh, lead the way before us. Lead the lovely, youthful chorus to the marshy, flowery pain. O 
all evil thoughts and profane be still. Far hence, far hence from our choirs depart. Mm -hmm. Who knows not well what the mystics tell, or is not holy and pure of heart? Who never has the noble reverie learned, or danced the dances of the muses high, or shared in the bike rites, which old be bull eating, Cratton's words supply? Who vulgar, coarse buffoonery loves, though all untimely the jest they make, or lives not easy and kind with all, or killing faction for bears to slake, but bears the fire from a base desire, some pitiful gain for himself to reap, or takes in office his gifts and bribes while the city is tossed on the stormy deep. Who fort and fleet to the foe betrays, or a vile Thorician ships away forbidden storms fr stores from Aegina's shores. To Epidaurus cross the bay, transmitting ore pads and sails and tar, that curse collector of five per cent, that knave who tries to procure supplies for the use of the enemy's armaments, the sickly and singer who dares, dares befoul the lady Hecate's wayside shrine, the public speaker who once lapooned in our Bacchic feast would with heart malign. Keep nibbling away the comedian's pay. To these I utter my warning cry. I changed them once, I changed them twice. I changed them thrice, that they draw not nigh. To the sacred dance of the mystic choir, but ye, my comrades, awake the song, the night-long revels of joy and mirth, which ever of right to our feast belong. Advance, true hearts, advance onto the gladsome bowers, onto the sward with flowers. Embosom bright, march on with jest and jeer and dance. Full well ye've supped tonight. March, chanting loud your lays. Your hearts and voices raising, the savior goddess praising, who vows she'll still our city save to endless days. Whatever Thorissians will, break off the measure, and change the time, and now with chanting and hymns adorn, Demeter, goddess mighty and high, the harvest queen, the giver of corn. presiding preserve and succor thy choral throng and grant us all in thy help confiding to dance and revel the whole day long and much in earnest and much in jest worthy thy feast may we speak therein and when we have bantered and laughed our best the victor's wreath be it ours to win Call we now the useful God. Call him hither without delay, him who travels amongst his chorus, dancing along the sacred way. Oh, come with the joy of that festival song. Oh, come to the goddess. Oh, mix with our throng. Untie through the journey, be never so long. O Lord of the frolic and dance, Iacus, beside us advance. For fun and for cheapness, our dress thou have rent. Through thee we may dance to the top of our bent, reviling and jeering, and none will resent. O Lord of the frolic and dance, Iacus, beside me advance. A sweet, pretty girl uh, I observed in, observed in the show. Her robe had been torn in the scuffle, and lo, there peeped through the tatters a bosom of snow. O Lord of the frolic and dance, Iacus, beside me, advance. Wouldn't I like to uh, follow on and try a little sport and dancing? Wouldn't I? Uh. <laughs> hmm. 
Shall we all a merry joke at Archimedes a poke? <laughs> Who has not cut his gillsman yet, though seven years old? Yet up among the dead, he is a demagogue and head and contrives the topmost place of the rascal dumb to hold. And Cleasthenes, they say, is among the tom tombs all day, bewailing for his lover and a lamentable whine. And Callius, I'm told, has become a sailor bold and cast a lion's hide over his members feminine. Can uh, any of you tell where Pluto here may dwell? For we sirs are two strangers who were never here before. Oh, then no further stray, nor again inquire the way. For know that ye have journeyed to his very entrance door. Take up the wraps, my lad. Now, is this not too bad? Like Zeus's corneth, he the raps keeps saying o'er and o'er. Now, wheel your sacred dances through the glade with flowers bedight. All ye who are partakers of the holy festal rite, and I will with the woman and the holy maidens go where they keep the nightly visual an auspicious light to show. Now, haste me to the roses and the meadows full of poses. Now haste me to the meadows in our own old way. And choral dances blending and dances never ending, which only for the holy, the destinies array. Oh, happy Mr. Chorus. The blessed sunshine o'er us, on us alone is smiling in the soft, sweet light. On us who strove forever with holy, pure endeavor, I like my friend and stranger to guide our steps right. What's the right way to knock? I wonder how the natives here are want to knock at doors. Oh no, dawdling, taste the door. You've got to remember the lion hide in the pride of Heracles. Boy, boy. Who, who's, who's there? I, Heracles the Ooh. Strong. Oh, you most shameless, desperate ruffian, you! Oh, villain, villain, arrest, villain! Oh, who seizes Carabas by the throat and fled and ran and rushed and bolted off, halting off the dog, my charge. But now I have gotten thee fast, so close to the stick's inky hearted rock, the blood bedadded peak of Acheron shall hem thee in. The hell hounds of Coyotes prowl around thee, whilst the hundred headed ass shall rive thy heartstrings. The Tartarin lamprey prey on thy lug, and the Thysarin gorgons mangle and tear thy kidneys, mauling them, entrails and all, into a bloody mash. I'll speed a running foot to fetch them hither. Hello. What now? I've done it! Call the god. Get up, you laughing stock. Get up directly before you're seen. What? I get up! I'm fainting. Please dab a sponge of water on my heart. Oh, here. Dab it, you! Where? Oh, you golden god's lies your heart there? It got so terrified. It fluttered down into my stomach's pit. Cowardliest of gods and men. The cowardliest? I? What, I? Who asked you for a sponge? A thing a coward never would have done. What then? A coward would have lain there wallowing. But I stood up and wiped myself with all. Well, Sidon, quite heroic. Indeed, I think so. But Weren't you frightened at those dreadful threats and shoutings? Frightened? Not a bit. I care not. Come then. If you're so very brave a man, will you be I and take the hero's club and lion skin? Since you're so monstrous plucky and I'll be now the slave and bear the luggage. Hand them across. 
I cannot choose but take them. And now observe the Xanthio Heracles, if I'm a coward and a sneak like you. Nay, you're the rogue from Melita's own self, and I'll pick up and carry on the trap. <clears throat> Oh, welcome, Heracles. Come in, sweetheart. My lady, when they told her set to work, bake mighty loaves, boil two or three terrines of lentil soup, roasted a prime ox whole, made rolls and honey cakes. So come along. You are too kind. I will not play. Let you go. I will not let you. She's making comf uh, comfits and tempering down her richest wines. Come, dear. Come on along. Pray I thank her. Oh, you're jesting. <laughs> I shall not let you off. There's such a lovely flute girl already, and you've two or three dancing girls also. Eh? What? Dancing girls? Budding virgins, freshly tied and trimmed. Come, dear, come in. The cook was dishing up the cutlets, and they're bringing in the tables. Then you go in and tell those dancing girls of whom you spade I'm coming in. Myself pick up the traps by let and fool me. Hi. Stop. <laughs> You're not in earnest. Just because I dressed you up. In fun as Heracles. Come, don't, don't keep fooling, Xanthius, but lift and carry in the traps yourself. Why, what? You are never going to strip me of these togs you gave me. Going to? No, I'm doing it now. Up with that lion skin! Bear witness all that God shall judge between us. Gods indeed! Why, how could you? The vain and foolish thought. Slave, a mortal, act Almina's son? <gasps> All right, then, take them. Maybe if God will, you'll soon require my services again. Oh! This is the part of a dexterous clever, man with his wits about him ever. One who has traveled the world to see, always to shift and to keep the wall close to the sunny side of the wall. <laughs> Not like a pictured block to be, standing always in one position. Nay, but to veer with expedition and ever to catch the favoring breeze. This is the part of a shrewd tactician. This is to be a theremonies. Truly, an exquisite joke twould be, him with a dancing girl to see, lolling at ease on Melisian rugs, me like a slave beside him standing? Ought that he wants to his lordship handing. Then as the damsel fair he hugs, seeing me all on fire to embrace her, he would perchance, for there's no man baser, turning him round like a lazy lout, Straight on my mouth, deliver a facer, knocking my ivory requirement out. Oh, Plathony, Plathony, here's that naughty man that he's got into our tavern once and ate up sixteen leaves. So, oh, so he is the very man. Bad luck for somebody. Oh, <laughs> and besides, there's twenty. Bits of steel have oval pieces. Somebody's gonna catch it. Oh, that guy looks you. Woman, you're talking nonsense. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, you thought I should know with you with your bushkins on? Oh, I have not yet mentioned all that fish. No, nor the newly made cheese. He gulped it down, baskets and all, and unlucky that we were. And when I just alluded to the price, 
He looks so fierce and battered like a bull. Yes, that's his way. That's what he always does. Ooh. Ooh. And that he drew his sword and seemed quite mad. Ooh, that he did. And terrified us so. We sprang up to the cockloft, she and I, and then he hurled out decamping with the rugs. That's his way too, but something must be done. Quick, run and call my patron, Cleonia. Oh, if you meet him, call Hyperbolus. We'll pay you out today. Oh, filthy throat! Oh, how I'd like to take a stone and hack those grinders out with which you chewed my wares! I'd like to pinch you in the dead man's pit. I'd like to get a reaping hook and scoop out that gullet with which you gorged my tripe. But I'll clean all to Cleon, he'll soon serve his writs. He'll twist it out of you. Today, he will. But I should see as me if I don't love Xanthus. I, I, I know your drift. Stop, stop that talking. I will not be Heracles. Oh, don't say so, dear. Darling Xanthus. <laughs> Why? How can I, a slave, a mortal, act act Alcamina's son? I, I, I know you're vexed, and I deserve it. And if you pummel me, I won't complain. But if I strip you of these togs again, perdition seize myself, my wife, my children, and most of all, that blear-eyed Archidemus. That oath contends me on those terms I take them. <laughs> now that at last you appear once more, wearing the garb that at first you wore, Wielding the club in the tony skin, now it is yours to be up and doing. Glaring like mad in your youth renewing, mindful of him whose guise you are in. If, when caught in a bit of a scrape, you suffer a word of alarm to escape you, showing yourself but a feckless knave, then will your master at once undrape you. Then you'll again be the toiling slave. <laughs> There, I admit, you have given me a capital hint, and I like the idea. Friends, had it occurred to me myself before, truly, if anything good befell, he will be wanting, I know full well. Funny to take the togs once more, never last why I'm in these, I'm vested. Ne'er shall you find me craven crested. No, for a didn't he look I'll wear. Aye, and he thinks it will soon be tested. Hark, how the portals are rustling there. Use the dog catcher, bind him, pinion him, drag him to justice. Somebody's gonna catch it. <laughs> Hands off, get away, stand back. Hey, you fighting ho, Didus, Scatabus, Paradoxus, come hither quick, fight me this dirty knave. <sighs> now isn't it a shame? The man should strike, and he a thief besides. A monstrous shame? A regular burning shame? By the Lord Zeus, if I were ever here before, if ever I stole one hair's worth from you, let me die. And now I'll make you a right noble offer. Arrest my lad and torture him as you will, and if you find I'm guilty, take and kill me. Hmm, torture him? How? In any <laughs> mode you please. Pile bricks upon him, stuff his nose with acid, flay him, rack him, hoist him. Flog him with a scourge or prissy brickles, and not only with this, a soft cleaved onion or a tender leek. A fair proposal. If I strike too hard and maim the boy, I'll make you compensation. I shan't require it. Take him out and flog him. <gasps> Nay, but I'll do it here before your eyes. Uh, now then, put down the traps. Mind you, speak you the truth, young fellow. Uh, man, don't torture me! I am... A god! You'll blame yourself hereafter if you touch me. 
Hello? What is this you're saying? I say, I'm Bacchus, son of Zeus, a god, and it he's the slave. Mm, you hear him? Hear him? Yes, all the more reason you should flog him well, for he's a god, he won't perceive it. Well, but you say that you're a god yourself, so why not you be flogged as well as I? Hmm, a fair proposal. And be this the test, whichever of us two you first behold, flinch you are crying out, he's not the god. Mm, upon my word, you're quite the gentleman. You're all right f f in justice. I strip them both. How can you test us fairly? Easily. I'll give you blow for blow. A good idea. We're ready now. Aceus, see if you catch me flinching. I struck you. No. Well, it seems no indeed. I will strike you, Dionysus. <laughs> Tell me when. I struck you. Struck me? Uh, then why didn't I sneeze? I don't know. Are you sure? I'll try the other again. And quickly, too. Good gracious. My good gracious. Not hurt you, did I? No, I merely thought of the Dimean Feast of Heracles. Holy man. Uh, Tis now the other's turn. Hi, hi. Hello? Look at those horsemen. Look. Uh, why these tears? <laughs> uh, there's such a smell of onion. <laughs> you mind it? Mind it? <laughs> Not a bit. <laughs> uh, I must go to the other again. Oh, oh. Hello? Do pray pull out this thorn. What, what what does this mean? Tis the other turns again. Apollo! Lord! Of Delus and of Pytho. He flinched, you heard him! Not at all! A jolly verse of Hypernax flashed across my mind. You don't have to do it. Cut his flanks to pieces. By Zeus both are on, turn your belly here. Poseidon! There, he's flinching! Who does train amongst the aging peaks and creeks and o'er the deep blue main? No, by Demeter, still I can't find out which is the god. But come ye both indoors, my lord himself and Persima, there, uh, being gods themselves, shall soon find out the truth. Right, right. I, I only wish. You had thought of that before you gave me those tremendous whacks. Come, muse, to our mystical chorus. Oh, come to the joy of my song. Oh, see on the benches before us that countless and wonderful throng where wits by the thousands abide with more than Cleophon's pride. On the lips of that foreigner base of Athens, the bane and disgrace, there's shrieking his kinsman by race, the garrious swallow of the race from the perch of exotic descent, rejoicing her sorrow to vent. She pours to her spirit's content a nightingale's woeful lament that even though the voting be equal, his ruin will soon be the sequel. Well, it suits the holy chorus evermore with counsel wise to exhort and teach the city. This we therefore adv advise. In the talisman of apprehensions, equalize the rights of all. If by frenetic wrestling some perchance sustain the fall, yet to these tis surely open, having put away their sin. For their slips and vacillations, pardon it your hands to win. Give your brethren back their franchise. Sin and shame it were that slaves who have once with stern devotion fought your battle on the waves should be straightway lords and masters, yea, Plataeans fully blown. Not that this deserves our censure. There I praise you, they're alone. Has the city in her anguish policy and wisdom shown? Nay, but these, of all accustomed on our ships to fight and win, 
They, their father too, before them. These are very kith and kin. You should likewise when they ask you pardon for their single sin. Oh, by nature, best and wisest. Oh, relax your jealous eye. Let us all the world as kinsfolks and as citizens acquire. All who on our ships will battle well and bravely by our side. If we conquer up our city, narrowing her with senseless pride. Now when she is rocked and reeling in the cradles of the sea, here again, we're after ages deemed we acted brainlessly. Oh, and oh, if I'm able to scan the habits and life of a man, who shall rue his inequities soon? Not long shall that little baboon, that Cliogenes shifty and small, the wickedest bathmen of all, who are lords of the earth, which is brought from the Isle of Simulus and brought with nitre and lie into soap. Not long shall he vex us, I hope, Yet ventures a piece to oppose, and being addicted to blows, he carries a stick as he goes, lest while he is tipsy and reeling, some robber his cloak should be stealing. Often has it crossed my fancy that the city loves to deal with the very best and noblest members of her commonweal. Just as with our ancient coinage and the newly minted gold, Yea, for these, our sterling pieces, all of pure Athenian mold. All of perfect dyed metal, all the fairest of the fair, all of workmanship unequaled, proved and valued everywhere, both amongst our own Hellenes and barbarians far away. These we use not, but the worthless pinchbeck coins of yesterday. All is dyed in basis metal. Now we always use instead. Even so, our stolen talisman, nobly born and nobly bred. Men of worth and rank and metal, men of honorable fame, trained in every liberal science, choral dance and manly game. These we treat with scorn and insult, but the strangers newly has come, worthless sons of worthless fathers, pinchbeck talisman, jellowy scum, whom in earlier days, the city of Hollywood would have stooped to use even for their scapegoat victims, these for every task we choose. <laughs> oh, unwise and foolish people, yet to mend your ways begin. Use again the good and useful. So hereafter, if ye win, twill be due to this your wisdom. If ye fall, at least twill be not a fall that brings dishonor, falling from a worthy tree. By Zeus, the savior, quite the gentleman your master is. Gentlemen, I believe you. He's all for wine and women is my master. Uh, but not to have flogged you. When the truth come out that you, the slave, were passing off as the master. He'd get the worst of that. Uh, bravo! That's spoken like a true slave. That's what I love myself. You love it, do you? Love it! I'm entranced when I can curse my lord behind his back. How about grumbling when you have felt a stick and scurry out the doors? Well, that's jolly too. How about prying? That beats everything. Great kin god Zeus, and what of overhearing your master's secrets? What? I'm mad with joy. And then blabbing them abroad. Oh, heaven and earth, but I can do that. I can't contain myself. Phoebus, Apollo, clap your hands in mine, kiss and be kissed. Mm. And for thee, tell me this. Tell me by Zeus, our rascal dumb own god, what is all what is all that noise within, and what means all this hubbub and row? That is Aeschylus and Euripides. Eh? Oh, wonderful, wonderful things going on. The dead are writing, taking different sides. Why? What's the matter? There is a custom with all crafts that the good and noble crafts, that the chief master of his art in each shall have his dinner in the assembly hall and sit by Pluto's side. I understand. Until another comes, more wise in the same art, then he must, then the first must give way. Ah, and how has this disturbed our Achilles? <sighs> Twas that he occupied the tragic chair, as in his craft the noblest. Who does it now? But when Euripides came down, he kept flourishing off before the highwaymen, these burghers and parasites, uh, these form our mob in Hades, till with listening to his twists and 
turns and pleas and counterpleas, they went mad on the man and hailed him first and wisest. Late with this, he claimed the tragic chair where Aeschylus was seated. Wasn't he pelted? Or oh, not he. Uh, the populace clamored out to try wh which of the twain was the wiser in his art. You mean the rascals? I, as high in heaven. But were none to side with Aeschylus? Uh, scantly and sparse for the good, uh, the same here. And what does Pluto now propose to do? He means to hold a tournament and bring the tragedies to proof. But Sophocles, how come not he to claim the tragic chair? Claim it? Oh, not he. Oh, when he came down, he kissed with reverence Aeschylus and clasped his hands and yielded willingly the chair to him. Now that he's going, say Clemenides, to sit third man. And if Aeschylus wins, he'll stay content. If not, for art's sake, he'll fight to death against Euripides. Will it come off? Oh, yes, by Zeus directly. And then, I hear, I, will wonderful things be done. The art poetic will be weighed in scales. What? Well, tragedy like butcher's meat? <laughs> Level they bring, and measure tapes for words, and molded oblongs. Is there bricks they are making? Wedges and compasses uh, for Euripides' vows that he'll test the dramas word by word. Specialist chase at this, I fancy. Well, he lowered his brow, up glaring like a bull. And who's to be the judge? And here comes the rub. Skilled men were hard to find, for with the Athenian Aeschylus somehow did not hit it off. Too many burglars, I expect, he thought. <laughs> and all the rest, he said, were trash and nonsense to judge his poetic worth. So, then at last, there choose your lord, an expert in the art. Uh, but we go in, for when our lords are bent, our urgent business, that means blows for us. Oh, surely with terrible wrath will this thunder-voiced monarch be filled <laughs> when he sees his opponent beside him. The tungster, the artifice skilled, stand wetting his tusks for the fight. Oh, surely his eye rolling fell will with terrible madness be fraught. Oh, oh, then will be the charging of plume waving words with their wild flowing mane. And then will be the whirling of splinters and phrases smoothed down with a plane. When the man with the grand stepping maxims, the language gigantic repel of the hero creator of thought. There will his shaggy born crest up bristle for anger and woe. Horribly frowning and growling, his fury will launch at the foe. Hughes clamp masses of words with exertion titanic up, tearing great ship, timber planks from the fray. But here will the tongue be at work, uncalling, word testing, refining. Sophist creative phrases, dissecting, detracting, maligning, shaking the envious bits, and with subtle analysis pairing, the longs large labor away.
don't talk to me. I won't give up the chair. I say I am better in the art than he. You hear him, Aeschylus? Why don't you speak? <laughs> He'll do the grand first, the juggling trick. Uh, he used to play it in all his tragedies. Come, my fine fellow, pray. Don't talk too big. Oh, I know the man. I've scanned him through, through and through. A savage, creating, stubborn, pulling fellow. Uncurbed, unfettered, uncontrolled of speech. Unperaphrastic. Bum, best eloquent. Ha! Sayest thou, so child of the Garden Queen, <laughs> and this to me? <laughs> Thou chattering babble collector, thou pauper creating rags and pitcher stitcher, thou shalt buy it dearly. Pray, be still, nor heed thy soul to fury, Aeschylus. Not till I've made you see the sort of man this cripple maker is who crows so loudly. Bring out a you, a black fleeced you, my boys. Here's a typhoon about to burst upon us. Thou picker upper of Cretan monodies, foisting thy tales of incense on the stage. Forbear, forbear, most honored Aeschylus. And you, my poor Euripides, be gone if you are wise out of this pitiless hail, lest with some heedy word he crack your skull and batter out your brainless telephys, and not with passion. Aeschylus. But calmly test and be tested. Hmm? Tis not meet for poets to scold each other like two baking girls. But you go roaring like an old <laughs> <coughs> I'm ready. I don't draw back one bit. I'll lash, or if he will let him lash first. The talk, the lace, the sinews of a play. I and my Pelitus, my Ellis, my Malaga, A and Tilipus. And what do you propose? Speak, Aeschylus. I, I could have wished to meet him otherwhere. We fight here not on equal terms. Why not? <laughs> well, my poetry survived me. His died with him. He's got it here, all handy to recite. Uh, Howbeit, if you so wish it, so we'll have it. What? Oh! Bring me fire and bring me frankincense. I'll pray or ere uh, the clash of wits begin to judge the strife with poetic, high poetic skill. Meanwhile, chorus, invoke the muses with a song. Oh, muses the daughters divine of Zeus, the immaculate nine, who gaze from your mansions serene on intellects subtle and keen, when down to the tournament lists in bright polished wit they descend with wrestlings and turnings and twist in the battle of words to contend. Oh, come and behold what the two antagonist poets can do whose mouths are the swiftest to teach grand language and filings of speech. For now of their wits is the sternest encounter commencing in earnest. Ha! <sighs> ye too, put up your prayers before ye start. <laughs> Demeter, mistress, Nourisher of my soul, oh, make me worthy of thy mystic rites. Now put on incense, you Euripides. 
Excuse me, no. My vows are paid to my other gods than these. What? A new coinage of your own? Precisely. Pray then to them, those private gods of yours. Either my pasture volubly rolling tongue, intelligent wit, and critic nostrils keen. Oh, well, and neatly may I trounce his place. We also are yearning from these to be learning, some stately measure, some majestic grand, movement telling of conflicts nigh. Now for the battle array they stand, tongues embittered and anger high. Each has got a richsome will, each an eagle and nimble mind. One will build an artistic skill, clear cut phrases and wit refined. Then the other with words defiant, stern and strong like an angry giant laying on with uprooted trees soon will scatter a world of these super scholastic subtleties now then commence your arguments and mind you both display true wit with metaphors nor things which any fool could say. As for myself, good people, I'll tell you by and by my own poetic worth and claims. But first of all, I'll try to show how this portentous quack, this portentous quack beguiled the silly fools whose tastes were nurtured ere he came in Trinicus's schools, he'd bring some single mourner or seat on seated and veiled. Twould be Achilles, say, or the Niobe, the face you could not see. An empty show of tragic woe who uttered not one thing. Tis true. <laughs> then, then in the chorus came and rattled off a string of four continuous lyric odes and the mourner never stirred. <laughs> I liked it too. I sometimes think that I, those mutes, prefer to all your chatterers nowadays. Ah, because, it, because if you must know, you were an ass. An ass, <laughs> no doubt. What made him do it, though? Oh, well, that was his quackery. Don't you see? To set the audience guessing when Niobe would speak, and meanwhile the drama was progressing. The rascal! He took how he took him in. Oh, twas shameful, was it not? Aeschylus, what makes you stamp and fidget so? Oh, he's catching it so hot. So when he had humbugged us a while, and now his wretched play was halfway through, a dozen words, great wild bull words, he'd say, fierce bugaboos with bristling crests and shaggy eyebrows too, which not a soul could understand. Oh, heavens. <laughs> Be quiet, do but not one single word was clear. Don't your teeth be gnashing. Twas all scamanders, moated camps, and griffin eagles flowed flashing in burnished copper on the shields, chivalric precipice high expressions hard to comprehend. I, by the powers and I, full many a sleepless night might have spent in anxious thought, because I'd find the tawny cock horse out. What sort of bird it was? It was a sign, you stupid dolt, engraved the ships upon. Eric sees, I suppose it was. Philoxenus' son. Now, really, should a cock be brought into a tragic play? You enemy of gods and men. 
What was your practice, pray? Oh, no cock horse in my plays. Oh, by Zeus, no goat stag. Then you'll see such figures are blazoned forth in median tapestry. When first I took the art from you, a bloated and swine, poor thing, with turgid duskinating and words and heavy dieting, first I reduced and toned damn her down and made her slim and neat with wordlets and with exercise and pauses a beat. And next, a dose of chatter juice distilled from books I gave her and Martin and Bonodies she took with sharp cephason for flavor. I never used haphazard words or plunged abruptly in, who entered and ex first explained at large the drama's origin and source. Oh, its source, I really trust, was better than your own. Then, from the very opening lines, no idleness was shown. The mistress talked with all her might. The servants talked as much. The master talked. The maidens talked. Uh, the, um, the masters talked. The maidens talked. Um, they all talked. For such an outrage, <laughs> was death not your due? Hmm. Huh. No. By Apollo, no. That was my democratic way. Ah! Uh, let that topic go. Your record is not there, my friend, particularly good. Then next I taught all these to speak. You did so, and I would, that ere such mischief you had wrought, your very lungs had split. Cannons of verse I introduced, and neatly chiseled wit to look to scan, to plot, to plan, to twist, to turn, to woo, or all to spy, in all to pry. You did. I say so too. I showed them the scenes of common life, the things you we know and see where any blunder would at once by all detected be. I never blustered on or took them breath and wits away by Secunus or Memnon clad in terrible array with bells upon their horses' heads thy audience to dismay. Look at his pupils, look at mine, and there to contrast view uncouth Megamendus is his and rough for Miss rough for Mrs. Two, great long beard, lance and trumpet men, flesh terrors with their pine, oh, oh. but Natty, Spart, Theraminus, and Selethophron are mine. Theraminus, a clever man and wonderfully sly, mm -hmm. immerse him in a flood of ills, he'll soon be high and dry. A Cayenne with a kappa, sir, not Cayenne with a Kai. <laughs> I. I taught them all their knowing ways by chopping logic in my place and making mar my speakers try to reason out the how and the why. Mm. So now the people trace the springs, the sources and the roots of things and manage all their households too for far better than they used to do. Scanning and searching, what's amiss? <laughs> and what was that? And how is this? Aye, truly, never now a man comes home, but he begins to scan and to his household loudly cries, why, where's my pitcher? What's the matter? Tis dead and gone, my last year's platter. Who got these olives? Bless the sprat, nibbled off the head of that. And where's the garlic vanished, pray? I purchased only yesterday. Whereas of old, our stupid youths would sit with open mouths and eyes like any dull-brained mammacoot. <laughs> oh. 
All this thou beholdest, Achilles, our boldest. And what wilt thou reply? Oh, draw tight the rein, lest that fiery soul of thine whirl thee out of the listed plain, past the olives and o'er the line. Dire and grievous the charge he brings. See thou answer him, noble heart, not with passionate bickerings. Shape thy course with a sailor's art. Reef the canvas, shorten the sails, shift them edgewise to shun the gales. When the breezes are soft and low, then, well under control, you'll go quicker and quicker to strike the foe. Of first of all, the Hellenic bars, high loftily towering verse to rear, and tragic phrase from the dust to raise, pour forth thy fountain with right good cheer. My wrath is hot at this vile mischance, and my spirit revolts at the thought that I must bandy words with a fellow like him. But lest he should vaunt that I can't reply, come, tell me, what are the points for which a noble poet our praise obtains? For his ready wit and his counsel sage, and because the citizen folks he trains to be better townsmen and worthier men. If then you have done the very reverse, bound noble-hearted and virtuous men and altered them, each and all for the worse. Pray, what is the need you deserve to get? Nay, I ask him not, he deserves to die. For just consider what style of men he received from me. Great, six foot high, heroical souls who never would blench from a townsman's duty in peace or war. <laughs> not idle loafers or low buffoons or rascally scamps such as now they are, but men who were breathing spears and helms and the snow white plume in its crested pride, the grave and the dart and the warrior's heart and its sevenfold casing of tough bull hide. Thou stun me, I know, with his armory work. This business is going from bad to worse. And how did you manage to make them so grand, exalted, and brave with your wonderful verse? Come hmm. ask this. Answer. And don't stand mute in your self-willed pride and arrogance flee. A, a drama I wrote with the war god filled. Its name? <laughs> Tis the Seven Against Thebes. That I mean. Which who so beheld with eagerness swelled to rush to the battlefield there and then? Oh, that was a scandalous thing you did. You have made the Thebans mightier men, more eager by far for the business of war. Now, therefore, receive this punch on the head. Ah, ye might have practiced the same as yourself, but ye turned to other pursuits instead. Mm. The, then next, the Persians. I wrote in praise of the noblest deed that the world can show. And each man longed for the victor's wreath to fight and to vanquish his country's foe. I was pleased. I own when I heard their moan for old Darius, their great king, dead. When they smote together their hands like this and ever alike the chorus said, Aye, such are the poet's appropriate works. And just consider how all along, from the very first they have wrought you good, the noble bards, the masters of song. First, Orpheus taught you religious rites and from bloody murder to stay your hands. Hmm. Asius, healing and oracle lore and Hesiod, all of the cultures of lands. This time to gather, the time to plow, and got not Homer in his glory divine by singing of valor and honor and right and the sheen of the battle extended top line, the ranging of troops and the arming of men. Oh, I, but he didn't teach that, I opine, to Pantocles, which he was leading the show. I couldn't imagine what he was at. He had fastened his helm on the top of his head he was trying to fasten his plume upon that. But, but others, many and brave, he taught of whom was Lamachus, hero true. And thence my spirit the impress took, mm. 
and many a lion heart chief I drew. Pericles, Tusers, illustrious names, for fain the citizen folk would spur to stretch themselves to their measure and height whenever the trumpet of war they hear. But Phaedrus and Stenibus, no, no harlotry business deformed my plays, and none can say that ever I drew a lovesick woman in all my days. For you, no lot or portion had gotten Queen Aphrodite. <laughs> Thank heaven for that. But ever on you and yours, my friend, the mighty goddess mightily sat. Yourself she cast the ground at last. Oh, aye. That came uncommonly pat. You showed how cuckolds are made. And lo, you were struck yourself by the very same fate. But say, you cross gains tensor of mine, how my... Stenables could harm the state. Full many a noble dame, the wife of a noble citizen, Hemlock took and died, unable to shame and sin of your Belafrasini's to brook. Was then I wonder the tale I told of Phaedra's passionate love untrue? Not so, but tales of incestuous vice the sacred poet should hide from view nor ever exhibit and blazon forth on the public stage to the public ken. For boys a teacher at school is found, but we, the poets, are teachers of men. We are bound things honest and pure to speak. And to speak great Lycabitus pray, and massive blocks of Parnassus rocks. Is this that things honest and pure to say? In human fashion, we ought to speak. Alas, poor Whitling, <laughs> can't you see that for mighty thoughts and heroic aims, the words themselves must appropriate be? And grandeur belike on the ear should strike the speech of heroes and godlike powers, since even the robes that invest their limbs are statelier, grander robes than ours. Such was my plan, but when you began, you spoiled and degraded it all. How so? Your kings in tatters and rags you dressed and brought them on a beggarly show to move forsooth our pity and ruth. And what was the harm I should like to know? No more will a wealthy citizen now equip for the state a galley of war. He wraps his lings in tatters and rags and whines he is poor, too poor by far. But uh, under his rags, he is wearing a vest as woolly and soft as a man could wish. Let him go the state, and he's off to the mart, an eager, extravagant buyer of fish. Moreover, to prate, to harangue, to debate is now the ambition of all in the state. Hmm. Each exercise ground is in consequence found deserted and empty. To evil repute your lessons have brought our youngsters and taught our sailors to challenge, discuss, and refute the orders they get from their captains. And yet, when I was alive, I protest that the knaves knew nothing at all, save for rations to call and to sing rapapé as they pulled through the waves. And bedad to let fly from their sterns in the eye of the fellow who tugged at the undermost oar. And a jolly young messmates with filth to besmirch and to land for a filching adventure ashore. But now they harangue in dispute and won't row and idly and aimlessly float to and fro. Of what ills is he not the creator and cause? Mm. Consider the scandalous scenes that he draws his bods and his panders, his women who give, give birth in the sacred shrine, whilst others with brothers are wedded and bedded and others opine that not to be living is truly to live. And therefore our city is swarming today with clerks and with demagogue monkeys who play their jack and name tricks at all times in all places, deluding the people of Athens. Mm. But none has training enough in athletics to run with a torch in his hands at the races. Bo, 
by the powers, you are right. At the Panathenea, I laughed till I felt like a potsher to see a pale, paunchy young gentleman pounding along with his head butting forward the last of the throng in the direst of straits and behold at the gates, the seraphites flapped him and smacked him and slapped him in the ribs and in the loin, in the flank and the groin. And still as they spanked him, he puffed and he panted till at one mighty cuff, he discharged such a puff that he blew out his torch and the vent. Dread the battle and stout the combat, mighty and manifold looms the war. Hard to decide in the fight they're waging, one like a stormy tempest raging, one alert in the rally and skirmish, clever to parry and form and spar. Nay, but don't be content to sit always in one position, many the fields for your keen edged wit. On then, wrangle in every way, argue, battle, be flayed and flay, old and new from your store's display. Yea, and strive with venturesome daring, something subtle and neat to say. Fear ye this, that today's spectators like the grace of artistic lore, like the knowledge they need taken, all the points yet will soon be making? <laughs> Fear it not, the alarm is groundless. That be sure, it's not the case anymore. I'll have fought the campaign ere this. Each of a book of the words is holding. Never a single point they'll miss. Bright their natures, and now I wing. Newly wedded and sharp and keen. Thread not any defective wit. Battle away without misgiving. Sure that the audience, at least, are fit. Well then, I'll turn to your prologues now. Beginning first to test the first beginning of this fine poet's plays. Why, he's obscure even in the enunciation of the facts. Which of them will you test? Many. But first, give us that famous one from the Oresteia. Silence all! Now, Aeschylus, begin! Brave are Hermes, witnessing a father's power. Be thy my savior and mine, day to day. For here I come, and hither I return. Any fault there? <laughs> a dozen faults and more. <laughs> eh? Why? The lines are only three in all. But every one contains a score of faults. <laughs> now, Aeschylus, keep silent if you don't. You won't get off with three iambic lines. Silent for him! If my advice you'll take. Why, at first, starting, here's a false sky high. Do you see your folly, Dionysus? Have your way! I care not! What is my fault, Euripides? <laughs> Begin the lines again. Grave Hermes. Witnessing a father's power. And this beside his murdered father's grave, Orestes speaks. I, I, I say not otherwise. Then does he mean that when his father fell by craft and violence at a woman's hand, the god of craft was witnessing the deed? Huh? It was not he, it was the helper Hermes. He called the grave and this he showed by adding, it was his sire's prerogative he held. Why, this is worse than all. If from his father he held this office grave, then why then? He was a graveyard rifler on his father's side. Bacchus, the wine you drink is stale and fusty. Hmm. Hmm. Give him another. You look out for faults. Be thou my savior and mine aid today. For here I come, and hither I return. The same thing twice as clever Aeschylus. How twice? Oh, I just consider, I'll explain. I come, says he, and I return, says he. It's the same thing to come and to return. I 
Hey-ya. Just as if you said, good fellow, lend me a kneading trowel, likewise a trowel to knead it. <laughs> it is not so, you, you, you everlasting talker, they are not the same. The words are right enough. How so? Inform me how you use the words. A man not banished from his home may come to any land with no special chance. A homebound exile both returns and comes. Oh, good, my Apollo. What do you say, Euripides, to that? I say Orestes never did return. He came in secret. Nobody recalled him. Oh, good, by Hermes. I've no least suspicion what he means. Repeat another line. Aye, Aeschylus, repeat one instantly. You, Mark, what's wrong? Now on this funeral mound, I call my father to hear, to hearken. And there he is again, to hear, to hearken. The same thing exactly. I, but he's speaking to the dead, you knave, who cannot hear us, though we call them thrice. And, and how do you make your prologues? Ah, you shall hear. And if you find one single thing said twice, or any useless padding, spit upon me. <laughs> well, fire away! In Nymologog to hear your very accurate and faultless prologues. A happy man was Oedipus at first. Not so. By Zeus, a most unhappy man, who not yet born nor yet conceived, Apollo foretold would be his father's murderer. How could he be a happy man at first? Then he became the wretchedest of men. Not so, by Zeus. He never ceased to be. No sooner born than it they exposed the babe, and that in winter in an earthen crock, lest he should grow a man and slay his father. Then with both ankles, pierced and swollen, he limped away to Polybus. Still young, he married an ancient crone, and her his mother too, then scratched out both his eyes. Happy indeed had he been, Aristonides' colleague. Mm -hmm. Nonsense, I say my prologues are first rate. Nay then, by Zeus, no longer line by line, I'll maul your phrases, but with heaven to aid, I'll smash your prologues with a bottle of oil. You, mine with a bottle of oil? <laughs> with only one. You frame your prologue so that each and all fit in with a bottle of oil or coverlet skin or reticule bag. I'll prove it here and now. You will prove it. <laughs> you. <laughs> I will. Well then, begin. Aegyptus, sailing with his fifty sons, as ancient legends mostly tell the tale, touching at Argos, lost his bottle of oil. Hang it! What's that? Who oh, confound that bottle of oil? Give him another. Let him try again. Bacchus, who clad in fawn skins, leaps and bounds with torch and thrices in the choral dance along Parnassus. Lost his bottle of oil. Oh, me! We are stricken with that bottle of... Again. Poo poo. That, that's nothing. I have a prologue here. He'll never tack his bottle of oil to this. No man is blessed in every single thing. One is of noble birth, but lacking means. Another base born. Lost his bottle of oil. Yes, Well, Lower your sails, my boy. This bottle of oil is going to blow a gale. Oh, by Demeter, I don't care one bit. Now from his hands, I'll strike that bottle of oil. Go on then, go. But where of the bottle of oil? Once Cadmus, quitting the Sidonian town, Agoner's offspring. Lost his bottle of oil. Oh, pray <laughs> by Matt. <laughs> Buy off that bottle of oil. 
or else he'll smash our prologues all to bits. I buy of him? If my advice you'll take. No, 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 no. I've many a prologue to say to which he can't tack on this bottle of oil. I, <laughs> Pe Pelops, son of Tantalus, one driving his mares to Pisa. That's his bottle of oil. There. He tacked on the bottle of oil again. Oh, for heaven's sake. Pay him its price, dear boy. You'll get it for an opal speak and span. Not yet, by Zeus. I have plenty of prologues left. Onus once reaping. Lost <sighs> bottle of oil. Pray let me finish one entire line first. One onus once reaping an abundant harvest, offering the first fruits. Lost <laughs> bottle of oil. <sighs> Dionysus, oh, Dionysus. What in the act of offering? Fie! Who stole it? Oh, don't keep bothering. Let him try with this. Zeus, as by Truth's own voice, the tale is told. No! He'll cut in with lost his bottle of oil. Those bottles of oil on all your prologues seem to gather and grow like stars upon the eye. Turn to his melodies now, for goodness' sake. Oh, I can easily show that he's a poor melody maker. Makes them all alike. <laughs> what, oh, what will be done? <laughs> Strange to think that he dare Blame the bard who has won more than all in our days. Fame and praise for his lays. Lays so many and fair, much I marvel to hear. What the charge he will bring against our tragedy's king. Yea, for himself do I fear. Wonderful lays. Oh, yes, you'll see directly. I'll cut down all his metrical stage strains to one. And I, I'll take some pebbles and keep count. Lord of Phythia, Achilles, when here I hearing the voice of the hero dividing, ha, smiting, approaches thou not to the rescue. We by the lake. We, by the lake, who abide, are adoring our ancestor Hermes. Ha! Smiting approaches down, not to the rescue! Oh, Aeschylus, twice art thou smitten. Woo! The bee wardens are here. They will quickly, the temple of autumn is open. Ha! Smiting approaches, shall not to the rescue. Ha! I will expound, for I know it. The omen, the chieftains encountered. Ha! Smiting approaches, thou not to the rescue! Rise, Aeschylus! Thrice art thou smitten! <laughs> Wait till you heard another batch of lays culled from his lyre accompanied melodies! <laughs> Oh, Zeus and King, the terrible lot of smitings, out to the bath. I'm very sure my kidneys are quite inflamed and swollen with all these smitings. Go on then, go, but no more smitings, please. <laughs> oh, the twin throne powers of Akai, the lords of mighty Hellenes. Oh, for lateral, lateral, lateral rat. Underneath send it the Sphinx, the Sphinx, the unciency, the cheatinous bloodhound. Oh, for lateral, lateral, lateral rat. Launches with fear, fierce, with brand and a hand, the Avengers, a terrible eagle. Oh, for lateral, lateral, lateral rat. <laughs> so, for the swift winged hounds of the air, he provided a booty. Oh, for lateral, lateral, lateral rat. The throng bearing on. Aeolus? Aeolus? 
Oh, for that's all, that's all, that's all, that's all, that's all, that's comes the, that flat to thrat from Marathon or where picked you up these cable twister strains? From noblest source, for noblest ends I brought them, unwilling in the muse's holy field. The self same flowers as Phrynicus to cull, but he from all things rotten draws his lays, from carrion flutings, catches of Miletus, dance music dirges. <laughs> you should hear directly, bring me the lyre. Yet wherefore need a lyre for songs like these? Oh, good heavens. Where she that bangs and jangles her castanets, Euripides' muse, present herself and goddess for the universe. The muse herself can't be a wanton. No. No. How cons, who be the ever rippling waves of the sea are babbling, doing your plumes with the drops that fall from wings in the salt spray dabbling? Spiders ever with twirling fingers, weaving the warp and the woof. Little brittle network, fretwork, under the coins of the roof. The minstrel shuttles care, where in the front of the dark proud ships, yearly the flute loving dolphin skips. Races here and oracles there, and the joy of ten of young vines smiling, and the tendril of grapes care beguiling. Oh, embrace me, my child. Oh, embrace me. You, you see this foot, Dionysus? I do. And, and this? And that one too. You, Euripides, such stuff who compile, <laughs> dare my songs to abrade. You, whose songs in the style of Guarini's embraces are made. <laughs> so much for them, but I'd still like to show the way in which your monodies are framed. Oh, darkly lit, mysterious night, what may this vision mean? Sense from the world unseen with baleful omens rife, a thing of lifeless life, a child of sable night. A ghastly curdling sight in black funeral veils with murder, murder in its eyes and great enormous nails. Light ye the lanterns, my maidens, and dipping your jugs in the stream. Draw me the dew of the water and heat it to boiling and steam. So will I wash me away the ill effects of my dream. God of the sea, my dreams come true. Ho, lodgers, ho, this portent view. Glissy has vanished, carrying off my cock. My cock, that crew. Oh, mania, help. Oh, reeds of the rock. Pursue, pursue. For I, a poor girl, was working within, holding my distaff heavy and full, twirling my hand as the threads spin, weaving an excellent boblin of wool, thinking, tomorrow I'll go to the fair in the dusk of the morn and be selling it there. But he to the blue, up flew, up flew, on the lightliest tips of his wings outspread. To me he bequeathed, but woe, but woe, and tears, Sad tears from my eyes overflow, which I, the bereaved, must shed, must shed. O oh, children of Ida, sons of Crete, grasping your boughs to the rescue come, twinkle about on your restless feet, stand in a circle around her home. O oh, Artemis, thou made divine, Dictina, Huntress, fair to see, Oh, bring that keen nosed pack of thine and hunt through all the house with me. Oh, hectate with blue, with flameful brands. Oh, Zeus's daughter, arm thine hands, those swiftless hands, both right and left, 
thy rays on Bliss's conscious throw, that I serenely there may go and search by moonlight for the theft. Enough of both your odes. Enough for me. Now would I bring the fellow to the scales? That, that alone shall test our poetry now. And prove whose words are weightiest, his or mine. Then both come hither, since I needs must weigh the art poetic like a pound of cheese. Oh, the labor these wits go through. Oh, the wild, extravagant, new, wonderful things they are going to do. Who were they would ever have thought of it? Why, if a man had happened to meet me out in the street and intelligence brought of it, I should have thought that they was trying to cheat me, that this story was false and deceiving, <laughs> that were a tale I could never believe in. Hmm. Each of you stand beside his scale. We're here. And grasp it firmly whilst you speak your lines. And don't let go until I cry. Cuckoo. Ready. Ready. Now, speak your lines into the scale. Oh, that the Argo had not winged her way. River spurtious, cattle grazing haunts. Let go. Oh, look, by far the lowest, his scale sinks down. Why? How came that about? He threw in a river, like some wool seller wetting his wool to make it wait the more. But you threw in a light and winged word. Come, let him match another verse with mine. Each to his scale. We're ready. Speak your lines. Persuasion's only shrine is eloquent speech. Death loves not gifts. Alone amongst the gods. Let go. Let go. Down goes his scale again. He threw in death, the heaviest ill of all. And I persuasion, the most lovely word. A vain and empty sound, devoid of sense. Think of some heavier weighted line of yours to drag your skill down something strong and, and big. Where have I got one? Where, where, let's see. I'll tell you. Achilles threw two singles and a four. Come, speak your lines. This is your last set to. In his right hand, he grasped an iron clamped mace. Chariot on chariot, corpse on corpse was hurled. There now. Again. He has done you. Done me? How? Oh. He threw two chariots and two corpses in. Five score Egyptians could not live that way. No more of line for line. Let him, himself, um, his children, wife, Cephason, get in with all his books collected in his arms. Two lines of mine shall overweigh the lot. Both are my friends. I cannot decide between them. I don't desire to be at odds with either. One is so clever. One delights me so. <laughs> and you'll affect nothing for which you came? And how if I decide? Well, then take the winner. So will your journey be not made in vain. Heaven bless your highness. 
listen, I came down after a poet. Mm -hmm. What end? That so the city saved may keep her choral games. N now that whichever of you two shall best advise the city, he shall come with moi. And uh, first of Alcibiades, let each say what he thinks. The city travails sore. What does she think herself about him? What? She loves and hates and longs to have him back. But give me your advice about the man. Hmm? I loathe a townsman who is slow to aid and swift to hurt his town, who ways and means finds for himself, but finds not for the state. Poseidon, that's smart. <laughs> and what say you, Aeschylus? Twere best to rear no lion in the state, but having reared, tis best to humor him. By this the savior, I still cannot decide. <sighs> One is so clever and so clear the other. But once again, let each in turn declare what plan of safety for the state you've got. First, with Kinesius' wing, Thercretus, then Zephyrs walk them o'er the watery plain. <laughs> A funny sight I own, but where's the sense? If when the fleet's engaged, they holding cruets should rain down vinegar in their foemen's eyes. I know, and I can tell you. Tell away. When things mistrusted now shall trusted be, and trusted things mistrusted. <gasps> How? I, I don't quite comprehend. Be clear and not so clever. If we mistrust those citizens of ours, whom now we trust, and those employ whom now we don't employ, the city shall be saved. If on our present tack we fail, we surely shall find salvation in the opposite course. Good! Oh, Palamedes! Good, you genius! You! <gasps> Is this your cleverness or Kephisophon's? This is my own. Uh, the cruet plan was his. Mm. Now you, Aeschylus! But tell me whom the city uses, the good and useful? What are you dreaming of? She hates and loathes them. Does she love the, the bad? Not love them, no. She uses them perforce. How can one save a city such as this? whom neither frees nor woolen tunic suits. Oh, if to earth you rise, find out some way. There I will speak. I cannot answer here. Nay, nay. <laughs> Send up your guerdon from below. When they shall count the enemy's soil their own, and their, the enemies, when they know that ships are their true wealth, their so-called wealth delusion. Aye, but the justices suck that down, you know. Now then, decide. I will, and thus I'll do it. I'll choose the man in whom my soul delights. Oh, recollect the gods by whom you swore. You take me home again and choose your friends. Was my tongue swore. My choice is... Escalus! Oh, what have you done? <laughs> done? Given the victor's prize to Escalus? Why not? And do you dare look in my face after that shameful deed? What shameful? 
If the audience think not so. Have you no heart, wretch? Would you leave me dead? Who knows? If death be life, and life be death, and breath be mutton broth, and sleep a sheepskin. Now, Dionysus, come ye in. What for? Oh, and sup before you go. Right idea. Be faith. I'm no wise indisposed for that. Bless the man who possesses a keen, intelligent mind. This fool often we find. He, the bard of renown, now to earth reascends, goes a joy to his town, goes a joy to his friends, just because he possesses a keen, intelligent mind. Right it is and befitting, not by Socrates sitting, idle talk to pursue, stripping tragedy, art of all things noble and true. Surely the mind to school, find drawn quibbles to seek, find set phrases to speak, is but the part of a fool. Farewell then, Aeschylus, great and wise. Go save our state by the maxims rare of thy noble thought and the fool's chastise. For many a fool dwells there, and this to Cleophon give, my friend, and, and this to the revenue-raising crew, Nicomachus, Myrmex, next I send. And this to Archonomus, too, and bid them all that without delay to my realm of the dead they hasten away. For if they loiter above, I swear, I'll come myself and arrest them there. Oh, and branded and fettered the slaves shall go with the vilest rascals in all the town. Adiamantus, son of Leucophilus, down, down to the darkness below. I take the mission. This chair of mine, meanwhile, to Sophocles here commit. For I count him next in our craft divine, till I come once more by thy side to sit. But as for that rascally scoundrel there, that low buffoon, that worker of ill, oh, let him not sit in my vacant chair, not even against his will. Uh, chorus, escort him up with your mystic thrones, throngs, while the holy torches quiver and blaze. Escort him up with his own sweet songs and his noble festival lays. First, as the poet triumphant is passing away to the light, grant him success on his journey, ye powers that are ruling below. Grant that he find for the city good counsels to guide her aright. So we at least shall be freed from the anguish, the fear and the woe, freed from the onsets of war. Let Cleophon now and his band battle if they must, far away in their own fatherland. 